Here's another construction that's confusing at first and difficult to symbolize at first. Suppose we have a sentence, uh, I'm going to start with this bottom sentence first. Suppose someone says it is not the case that either Anne or Bob is home. So I'm abbreviating a little bit here. It's not the case that either Anne or Bob is home. If it's not the case that either of them's home, who's home? Well, let's, let's think of how we're going to symbolize this. To say that either of them's home, I write A or B, where A stands for Anna's home, B stands for Bob is home. A wedge B simply says Anne's home or Bob is home. Now, the negation operator, the it's not the case that, is being applied not to each one individually, it's being applied to the either of them. And so, what's really being denied is that either is home. So this says either is home, so I need to put this in parentheses, and now either is home is ready to be negated, so I put a tilde over the entire bracketed or parenthesis expression, and I'm saying it's not the case that either is home, because the it's not the case that applies to the either, and the either groups the A or the B into a unit. Now, if I say it's not the case either's home, who is home? Well, if either of them's home, if we take away the tilde for a minute, if either of them's home, that says that either Anne's home or Bob's home or they both are home. So the tilde denies all of that. So the tilde denies that either Anne's home or Bob's home or they both are home. So really, it's not the case either's home says that nobody's home. And assuming they're the only ones that live there, then if it's not the case that either is home, no one's home. Now let's look at this construction, which looks similar. Here we're saying that either Anne or Bob is not home. But the structure is different. The not comes after the or rather than before the or. And we have two subjects, Anne and Bob, and they're sharing the verb phrase equally. Since they share the verb phrase, they each get the not. So actually we have an an and a bob, between them is an or, and they each share the verb phrase is not home, and so they each get a tilde. Now this says Anne's not home or Bob's not home, and that's clearly the meaning of this, the sentence, either Anne or Bob is not home. It's just a short, shortened way of saying either Anne is not home or Bob is not home. Now, in this case, if either Anne or Bob is not home, who's home? And if you think about it, uh, it says either Anne's not home or Bob's not home or both are not home because this is an inclusive or. So it might be that Anne's home alone without Bob. It might be that Bob's home alone without Anne. It's just that either Anne's not or Bob's not. And so in this case, there might be someone home. We don't know. But in this case, if you think about it, nobody's home, assuming that they're the only ones that would be there. Therefore, these two sentences don't mean the same thing. These two structures don't mean the same thing. This guarantees nobody's home, assuming they're the only ones who'd be there, whereas this allows a possibility of someone being home. And now this allows us to show some equivalencies. So Mark, do you want to come in and do this with me? And we'll look at some equivalencies. Oh! Throw that away. So... Cold. So we say, it's not the case that both Ann and Bob are home. And... Uh, that can be rewritten so mm. that in, in, in so that it's it's w using a wedge instead of an ampersand, okay. but says the same thing. We're gonna look at how that be. It is false at Anne's home, or it is false at Bob's home. Mm -hmm. Bob right. Okay. So now we have to look at these and uh, agree that actually, even though there's different symbolizings, they are logically equivalent. If it's not the case that both Anne and Bob are home, who's home? Oh, 
one or more. At least one of them's not home. At least one of them's not home. Might both of them be home? Nope. No, because that's what's denied. Might one be home? Could be. Okay. So it might be Ann's home alone? Or Bob. Or Bob. See, so now we go over here. This says that either Ann's not or Bob's not. Isn't that say the same thing? Mm -hmm. that it guarantees they're not both home, which is all that this says. So we say these are logically equivalent. They may not be both the best translation for an English statement, but they're logically saying the same thing. Yeah. Okay. At least as far as wed uh, wedge and tilde and and go. 10%. So now let's take this. A negated disjunction. Uh, it's, uh, it's not the case that either of them's home. Okay. And so now we want to say that using an ampersand. Well, we could say it is false that Anne's home and it is false that Bob's home. That would and be logically equivalent. Logically equivalent. So this says it's not the case either of them's home, so who's home? Neither one. Neither one. So actually this is the same as neither nor. Yep. So nobody's home. So what's this say? Ann's not home, and Bob's not home. If there's only two people, they ain't home. Nobody's home. So, so these are saying the same thing. Same thing. So they're logically equivalent. And so, so the tilde does not just distribute straight onto these. Notice that you can move the tilde onto them, but the and changes to or. Mm -hmm. The tilde does not go right onto these. It goes onto them, but the or changes to and. So we say that tilde does not strictly directly distribute. And so it's very important to keep this in mind when you're symbolizing that that is not equivalent to uh, that, right? Right. right? They're not equivalent. And that is not equivalent to that. Yep. It's easy to get confused, isn't it? Still. 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 Thank you. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think that does it. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's good for symbolizing.